I will change a little bit my topic. I was planning to talk about a retro sigmoid approach. Nice, but I will change to talk about the vestibular schwannoma. Today you are seeing the whole lecture and more lecture about vestibular schwannoma. Surgery, no surgery, radio surgery, hybrid surgery. Everyone is trying to create a new idea, new approach to treat vestibular schwannoma. We know that the vestibular schwannoma, the results are directly related with the size and sometimes the location. We know that there is treatment that work. There are treatment that doesn't work. And there is some situation that you should understand the pathology itself, the disease itself, more than decide any kind of treatment. Not every patient need surgery, not every patient need to do treatment. I apologize that is, is in Portuguese here because I was just translating here. If you see the natural history of vestibular schwannoma, I will translate for you, okay? The mean growth per year in this paper of Walsh, what one, 0.16 millimeters per year. You see, 83% grows less than two millimeters per year. 36%, a little bit more than one millimeter per year. 13%, almost 15% decrease in size. You just watch and see. When the tumor is in the CP angle, the rate of growth is larger when the tumor is inside the meatus. It means that it is a very slow growing tumor. In the hearing, the people say about hearing, oh, if you don't do the surgery, they lose the hearing. Okay. The tumor that is growing faster than one millimeter per year has higher risk to lose the hearing. The tumor that not growing so fast has lower risk to lose the hearing. Now you have the contrapoint. In many human, we, we compare a lot radio surgery with natural history. Because the patient that receives radio surgery or radiation therapy for meningiomas, you don't see too much difference in the MRI. Looks the same. One year, two years, looks the same. But for vestibular schwannoma, you really see the difference. It means that the radio surgery works. It's true. I'm a neurosurgeon. I do surgery. I don't send to radio surgery. I prefer to do surgery. But it's the truth I have to tell to the people. It works. The conservative treatment in this paper by Shurato, his guy was radio surgeon, you know? oh, let him come back. See, this paper from radio surgery, you can see. But the, the rate is completely different. It means that you have one treatment that is competing with surgery. It 
means that the surgery, we need the best result that you can. But it does not mean you have to, to open everybody and do surgery in everybody. And there are two more like this. In 2006, almost nothing. 2011, like this. This patient here in 2006 was sent home and the people said, hey, no worry, this tumor, you never go, you live your life forever. The patient disappeared. Five years later came a tumor like this. See, the tumor is a very low growth, but we need to follow the patient. We need to follow the MRI year by year to know that there is some acoustic neuroma that the great majority of them grows very slow, but you have some that you grow faster. Follow the tumor, follow the, the behavior of each case is very, very important when you treat benign disease. Now come the war. Today, we know that they are doing more radio surgery than surgery for acoustic neuron. And they say they is very effective, preserve the function, but it's curative. I ask you, if you should do a central radio surgery tumor like this, six months like this, nine years like this, this patient is cured. No, the tumor is there. It means that the radio surgery is not a curative treatment. Maybe you have the control. Preserve the function. Maybe in the beginning. We know that the radiation therapy is not totally effect in one month, two months, six months. And the effect of radiation therapy can be for 10 years, 20 years. Not the good things, but the bad things. New tumor, vasculopathy, stroke, seizure, or transformation, it can happen in 10, 15, 20 years. Radiation therapy is designed for malignant tumor. Radiation therapy is not designed for benign tumor. It means that the only curative treatment for vestibular schwannoma is the total removal. Today they are coming with a new technology. They take the computer, they take the navigation, they take the, all the technology to say to us how much the tumor you should remove. Now you see adaptive hybrid surgery analysis. You go to surgery, you remove the area that is safe and leave one small piece. That is the best way, is the best treatment by radio surgery. The computer guide your hands. I don't know if this is the correct way to do medicine. Maybe in the future, who design the treatment, or not the doctor, maybe the lawyer, maybe the company. This is changing in acoustic neuroma more than other pathologies. For me, hybrid surgery is this. You do the surgery. You remove the maximum that you can. 
but there is a small piece of tumor that is attached or very adherence, adherence to the facial nerve. When you try to remove the electrophysiologist say, don't go there, don't go there, you have damage. Okay, you leave. In this small residual tumor that you follow for some time, it start to grow again, adhering to the facial nerve. Maybe in this situation, you can send to radio surgery. This is for me the concept of hybrid surgery. Do the maximum removal that you believe that's possible. And the residual that if it's growing, you can do radio surgery. We know that the, today that the radiation therapy induced tumor. You know that the worst meningioma is radiation induced. Do not send everybody to burn the head. Do with criteria. It's very, very important when you treat vestibular schwannoma. In the world today is so crazy that you see papers like this. Look at this, Professor Shirin, Professor O'Connor, let's listen. Efficacy of stereotaxy radio surgery for radiation induced meningioma. We treat radiation, they are treating radiation induced meningioma with radiation. And look the paper, the case that they are showing as example in the paper. Man. April 22, 2020. This tumor, I can give 10 centimeter margin of dura to remove this tumor. What make me more sad, make me more sad, that you see as co-authors of this paper, some prominent neurosurgeons in the world that are giving lecture around the world, talk about radical removal, removal, but they put his name, his name or their name in this kind of publication. Real microsurgery today has been difficult life, but more than microsurgery, the patient life. We know the vestibular schwannoma improve a lot, not only the microsurgical technique, the new technology, as you saw, very nice presentation from Dr. Mu from Korea and, and the Professor Marchiori from Italy. Wonderful technique, wonderful videos, very nice, very nice, very nice approach. Independent of the approach that you do. The idea is the radical total removal of the mass. I was the time the people was fighting retro sig trans lab trans thing trans something. It's not this the goal. The idea is here: remove the tumor or burn the head. These are two opposites. The endoscope is helping a lot. You see, very nice paper and very nice uh, cases show that Dr. Mu. Maybe Dr. Mu has has to organize, uh, have to compare his case with natural history of the disease, more than all the kind of treatment. And the trans lab give you very nice view of the facial nerve from control in this. And you do the cochlear implant at the same time, it's very nice, very nice idea. You should keep these ideas following. I do retro -seek. I prefer to do a retro -seek. As a neurosurgeon, you learn to work in the retro sigmoid area. 90% of the surgery in the skull base area can be removed by pterno approach with small radiation or retro sigmoid approach 
of a small radiation. It does not mean that this variation we should not learn. We should learn temporal bone, we should learn translab, we should learn press sigma in a fruit, we should learn cranial orbital zygomatic. But as a neurosurgeon, it should be mastered in retro sigmoid approach. And for us, that you are doing retro sigmoid every day, in our workhorse, you can go retro sigmoid approach. The position change, some people like to do same sitting position. The field is very clean, you can see very well. But I, I'm not feel comfortable, you know? I don't feel comfortable right to see and sitting position or same sitting position. The people like to put their head, the hand there and see. It's clean, it's very clean. The video will be wonderful. Some people just turn their head. I prefer to do in true lateral position and take the shoulder and pull it anteriorly. See, and I have the view directly from here. In this way, I will not turn the head. There is no problem to close the contralateral internal jugular vein. I prefer this. See, the problem with the shoulder, but if you pull the shoulder anteriorly, you can have a nice view. You do a retro sigmoid. Uh, um, Craniotomy, I know that some people do craniectomy. I prefer to do craniotomy to put the bone back. See, because if you do craniectomy, the, the muscle and it will be adherent to the dura and some pa patient will complain of a headache. See, if you put the bone back, I think it will be better. The limit will be the posterior limit of the sigmoid sinus. In some situation, you dissect a little bit more, but the great majority of the time, if you have the transverse sinus and the sigmoid sinus, it is enough. This part I prefer to do with the drill. The other part we prefer to do with the craniotomy. See? See, it goes from the drill to be safe and expose the sigmoid sinus in this area. To understand the anatomy and the idea where is the facial nerve is crucial, it's difficult to identify where is the facial nerve in the middle, but you know where is the facial nerve in the brain stem, you know where is the facial nerve in the internal auditory canal. You need to have the two stumps and follow from medial to lateral, from lateral to medial, and keep the middle, the tumor in the middle. I learned with masters as Professor Kono, as our friend here from Brazil, Dr. Velutini and Professor Sami, that there is arachnoid. And the idea is to keep the arachnoid to the vessels and to the nerve. I don't open the arachnoid to see the lower cranial nerves. I don't open the arachnoid to see the other nerves. I open the arachnoid like onion, you know, and go dissecting the arachnoid and keep the, the tumor in the middle. After that, you have the nerves and the arachnoid. Sometimes, sometimes you don't see clearly the facial nerve because these red arachnoids in front of you will protect the nerve. You don't see the facial nerve so clear. Sometimes you see very clear the facial nerve and the patient wake up with facial pulse. <laughs> Temporary, but we'll, we'll come back. The idea is to keep these arachnoids around. You open the internal auditory canal, you expose the tumor inside the internal canal, exposed in the posterior fossa, and after you follow the tumor from medial to lateral to retract at least as you can the cochlear nerve. This is one video where a small tumor, you see here, 
try to move this. Oh, sorry. That's what I got. You see, you open the canal wider where they can. The people ask me why I don't use too much uh, the diamond drill. I use the diamond drill when I'm over the nerve. When in the bone, I prefer to go like a, like a bone knife, you know? You go cutting, you see, you can use the 11 blade, you can use a smaller blade. Now I know that Professor Shirin is designing new blades, dissect anterior to posterior, uh, see, middle to lateral, lateral to middle, in this direction also. See, sometimes I wanna remove totally in one piece. But when we start to mobilize, you see something happen in the neurophysiology, maybe you do better to remove a small piece and decompress the tumor and depend of the size. And go slowly trying to preserve the physiology, try to preserve the vascularization. One of the tricks of this vestibular schwannoma surgery is never coagulate, irrigate. See, in the minimum you coagulate, because you never know how how be this coagulation to the nerves around. See, you go dissecting this way, you preserve the structure, right side, left side, in the patient, the post op preservation of functional nerve, interoperative hearing. You see, you see, there was a small piece that was down there, you, you go there and follow it. Okay? This is the simple one, the small one. There is the cap, it means that the hearing probably will be preserved. I say probably because sometimes in the, in the intraoperative is perfect, the hearing is, looks per perfect, the vocal plantation is perfect, the patient wake up deaf. I don't know what happens sometimes. The intraoperative to say everything is okay in the post op This surgery is something, maybe ischemia, maybe some ischemia that come later. We have larger tumor like this, when you do the same technique, you go there, dissect the nerve, identify the structure, you go to the internal detonium, you see that the tumor here, you pull the arachnoid, like laterally, see, how we are peeling the onion, see, to clean and leave just the tumor inside. You can do very slight coagulation, oh, it's, it's too much, okay? You open the internal auditory canal, okay, okay. Open the auditory canal, there is dura here, now you do internal decompression, we do with, with, with a, um, ultrasonic aspirator or you can do just with a simple aspiration, you see? You go inside the tumor, after you decompress a lot, max and you can, now you are going outside and try to find this plan. When you find this plan with the arachnoid, it means that you are safe. See, now you know where is the facial nerve. You keep the arachnoid here, never coagulate here. Some small bridge you can see. See the vein there, the compress there, pull the arachnoid there and clean me. Just follow it. You can remove the mess. Oh. Now medial to lateral and keeping this structure. See, if it's red, leave red. See? And clean this here very, very slowly in this direction here. You see me? And, and they be very gentle. This middle part is the most difficult that the facial nerve is attached. You have to see there, see there, and try to see and remove the tumor. In the post, immediate post of the patient preservation of the facial nerve. And keep it the anatomy of the nerve. 
can repeat this, can repeat again, in same, same surgery, same technique. Sometimes the plan is easier, sometimes place the plan is more difficult, see? But you do this, same technique. Independent of the size, you try to do the same technique. Larger will be the tumor, more difficult will be to find this plan. Sometimes you find easily, sometimes you don't find easily. Sometimes you hear a tumor that is attached to the nerve and have to leave a small piece or not. You see, you can do and keep the anatomical position of the nerve. Same situation like this, large tumor, same situation in the immediate post-op. See, there is this very slight seven. If you go to dissect the seven and see perfect, maybe you have damage. Sometimes you do the surgery like this. You don't see the nerves. I have no idea where is the facial nerve in this situation. Is, is in this arachnoid, or a very thick arachnoid. What I did, I dissect the arachnoid. And I left the arachnoid to the porous and to the brain stem. You see? And the post up like this. If you ask me where is the facial nerve this face, I didn't see it. I saw just the arachnoid. And I left the arachnoid to the anterior part. The larger tumor is more difficult. But you need to try to preserve the facial nerve. At least try, always. Go inside, decompress, and follow it. Same situation like this, same situation like this. Large tumor, decompress, facial nerve in the brain stand, facial nerve in the internal auditory canal. Decompress the tumor and try to find the facial from the, from the internal auditory meatus to the brain stand, preserving the arachnoid. But the people say, why open the head? You, if you can do a radio surgery, you can control. There is no risk. Of course, if you do radio surgery, if you do radiation therapy, in the post radiation therapy, there is no death. There is no facial palsy. There, no, there is no trigeminal pain. There is no hearing loss. But it's a matter of time. Maybe not for the facial, it's less common, but the hearing is a matter of time. They will lose the hearing. They may have a terrible facial pain with anesthesia. It's extremely rare, it's extremely rare to have a case that you remove a vestibular schwannoma and the patient has in the post-op anesthesia and pain, the facial pain, see? But it's not uncommon to have a facial pain see, with anesthesia that you call Anesthesia, anesthesia dolorosa. I don't know how to say. Anesthesia dolorosa is the worst complication that you can have in the treatment of vestibular schwannoma. This will almost never happen with surgery. It may happen with radio surgery. The, keep in mind that the treatment may be uh, have to consider not the immediate, see, the early results, but the long-term results. Hearing preservation in acoustic neuroma by, by microsurgery is forever. Hearing preservation by radio surgery is a matter of time. You can do the same situation here, very small tumor, 
you remove patient happy, hearing preserve, this are like a diamond, this will be forever. These have to keep in mind that if you do microsurgery, if you remove the tumor, this patient will have his facial nerve and his hearing preserved for the entire life. Today, you just saw the presentation of Professor Mike Ori, very, very nice. We have two ways to type, to restore the hearing. One, the, the brain standing implant. The other one is the cochlear implant. This will help you a lot. We published this a long time, uh, I think uh, two years ago. The patient with hearing loss, very small lesion, completely deaf. We did the surgery. You, you use the same time the implantation of uh, using cochlear implant. These results is very good. The patient adapt very well, but the patient has to understand the physiotherapy to recover of the hearing, to adapt the hearing is a very important, very important uh, uh, part in the treatment. Not only the surgery, the post-op physical therapy for recovery of the hearing and to adapt the hearing is very important part of the treatment. More important than this is the intraoperative uh, in the implant. This is a safe life procedure. What is a safe life procedure? To save the life of the patient. He will not recover the hearing perfect. He will continue to be almost deaf. But this procedure can save life. Do you know why? This guy can cross the street. If the car is coming, he can hear the noise of the car. If something wrong is happening, he can hear the noise of, of this. If he's doing very good physical therapy or uh, the, the phonotherapy and physical therapy in the post implant, they need a lot of efforts, a lot of, a lot of efforts. They can have not the real, total, normal life, but they will have a very good adapted life. This procedure is very important. A little bit that change for this guy that was totally deaf will be the best thing that you can do. If, if he can hear something, see, change completely his life. Sometimes have a case like this that's coming in Brazil, that's coming in India, that's coming in Rio. You cannot save the facial nerve. The patient has facial pulse in the pulse up. But this beautiful lady, you save her life. This surgery is to save the life of the patient, not the facial nerve, not the hearing, is to save the life. I know that today many people showing tumor larger than this and saving facial nerve and saving hearing in saving everything. I'm sorry, but in my hands, it doesn't work this way. I have large tumor with vestibular schwannoma, the facial pulse in the post -op. Of course, I have cases like this. I have small tumors that I don't know what's happening sometimes, the facial pulse. It's surgery. It's neurosurgery. It's the life of neurosurgeon. It's important, important to tell the truth. We only, a microsurgery and the, no, the neurosurgery will only survive against the machine, against the business, against the lawyer. You should tell the real truth for the patient. This beautiful lady was saving her life. 
the facial nerve was not totally safe. Now she's very happy. She's did some cosmetic treatment and some treatment to, to improve his facial palsy. We have new techniques to repair. This lateral procedure is very good for aesthetics. You see in the post op, looks nice. You have a new technique like this, you see? Yes, you see? Masseteric nerve transfer is a very, very nice result. This is the post op C. You see, this is a long time. You see, it is improving the quality of life. The quality of life is first tumor free. The quality of life is not be burned and be worried in entire life that a new malignant tumor can come in your head because of treatment that you did. Quality of life is to be alive. Thank you very, very much. We changed the date, the corona changed our life and the skull based community will be real, not in 2020, will be 2022 for the beautiful city of Rio de Janeiro. In this beautiful scenario, you have all the people there. We hope all these people that list me now to be there in Rio in 2020. 2022, March 2022. Thank you very, very much and sorry for the long time. Thank you, sir.